Oh, shoot. Here we go. Welcome to Crosstown Cardboard, episode 72. We're calling it Culture Collision Recap Part 1 because we're planning two parts and a triple for our third with Big Ken since we all three attacked Culture Collision together. But how rude of me. I should have introduced us first. That's Craig at New York City Sports Cards, the math teacher, the soccer coach, originally from Long Island, now in New York City. And then me, Carmine at Carmine's Cards from Westchester County, New York, Ossining, and now I'm a sports storyteller down here in Greenville, South Carolina. So just to give you a quick table of contents, we're going to start off going through our experience, Craig and I set up as dealers, along with Big Ken, at Culture Collision in Atlanta, the first time either one of us went to that show. Very interesting and unique, and we're going to get into that. And so we're going to talk about our 10,000-foot view of what Culture Collision was, the vibes, the people, the atmosphere. We also saw Luca drop 73, which was amazing. We'll have to talk about that. And then we're going to go through Craig and I's second deal together ever, which the first deal was really how we met initially. And then look at us 72 episodes in to a sports card podcast. And then Craig had this great idea to go through the first team, all culture collision team, which is basically just some of the best people we met at Culture Collision and the stories attached to them, which of course is attached to cards. So Craig, first of all, I know it's a, a couple, you know, days after, actually it was just yesterday we were there. Just one day. It was just yesterday. One day, just one day ago. It feels like a lifetime ago getting back to the real world after a, a card spectacular for three days. So how are you feeling about the show now and your, 10,000 foot view, your vibes of it. I feel really good about how everything went this weekend. It was the first time you had done it before, but my first time setting up at a show and to be expected time just flew by. First time setting up at, at this show. At a big show. Oh, at a big show. Okay. A big show. Yes. But first time going to the show, I had pretty high expectations because of what I had heard about the show in the past. Just the fact that it was in Atlanta and you could tell it was a different vibe. So mm -hmm. I'm going to describe my experience best with the Instagram story that I just put up an hour ago. Okay. And I said, Culture Collision was the most fun show I've ever set up at. There was a different type of energy in the room, a more exuberant and culturally diverse crowd, which was reflected in both the conversations and cards themselves. Different vendors, not a ton of vintage, like your traditional card show, but still plenty. Mm -hmm. DJ playing my type of music. And being in a fun city like Atlanta, all attributed to a positive experience. Tons and tons of deals made with people from all over, everywhere from L.A. to the Czech Republic, kids, families, etc. Carmine and I will dive deeper into this on the podcast. But for now, here are the pickups. So here, here we are on the podcast. I'm, I'm following along with you, bro. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, what do you that think? Pretty, pretty good synopsis. Great, great synopsis. I'm curious when you say playing my type of music how would you describe that music the moment I, I went to the bathroom at one point and at one point i walked out and the first song that i heard was studio by schoolboy q which is a song i remember listening to summer 2014 i'm like yeah this is not a song that i would usually hear at a different type of card show i think i might have heard some lauren hill in there at some point yeah that, that's it was, uh, just a little more like hip-hop which just for me personally it's like my style yeah, I remember going over there at one point, leaving the table and trying to catch the end of Swag Surf that mm. was going on because, you know, I wanted to hold my cards up and go back and forth, Swag and Surf, and you know, but I got I got over there and the song was changing, so that was too bad. Next year. But uh, I definitely agree, yeah, next year. I definitely agree with, um, like, this was by far the best quality of sports card and sports conversations that I've ever had. At a show, I think a lot of that has to do with setting up with you because I've never seen somebody friendlier and better at welcoming people and starting a genuine sports card, sports conversation than what you were doing. I mean, at one point, you know, it wasn't the busiest show I've ever been to as far as foot traffic. I think the rain on Saturday really hurt. You know, remember when we were going out for lunch? We're like, yeah, we're, we're just going to get the concessions. Then. We can't. Which, by the way, the turkey sandwich concession stand was fine. Yeah, 
I got a got a couple hot dogs there, which was good. But um, at one point, you know, like I said, not as much foot traffic as what we thought, partially because of the weather. Who knows, you know, what contributed to it. But uh, I heard it wasn't as much as the culture collisions in the past. But at one point, I just felt like since there weren't that many deals going on for us, we were just literally talking to everybody who who was going past the table. Like, I, I'm looking at people. I'm like, oh, this seems like it's going to be a fun conversation, you know, or what? A, that kid with all the Steelers uh, yep. gear on, you know, we met people from fans of all different sports and. That was like my takeaway was, wow, you know, all those conversations, even though there were there were definitely some good deals that we made. But like, I don't know. Did you find the conversation level to be I was surprised by how good and and willing people were to chat? I agree. And surprising how many different connections there were. Just for an example, at the last day, someone came up to our show who is Ryan's collectibles. who I was talking to today. He was wearing a Clemson pullover. Yeah. And he. I'm like, oh, you know, my buddy, he's walking around right now, but he's a sports reporter for Clemson. Maybe you know him. And of course he did. So there were multiple people who knew you from the news from South Carolina. So that's cool. And you fit, you find this out just by talking and making conversation with people. Mm -hmm. um, that was great. You know, at the end of the day, the card shows are, in essence, more or less the same idea. It's we're buying, selling, trading sports cards. I just felt like the venue, the city – Maybe it not being overcrowded made for a good experience. And yeah, true, true, because there were more opportunities for people to actually stop and talk to you rather than, you know, moving through to the next one because everybody's like trying to look into your showcase. But it was a, a big space enough where I don't think I hit every table walking around. Yeah, yeah. But I, it, it was enough that it allowed me to do what I love doing at shows, and that's treasure hunting. Yeah. You know, I had a, I had a takeaway from the show as I didn't get like crazy pickups, but I, I thought to myself at one point, a card that comps a lot, maybe for a hundred bucks and you're trying so hard to buy it at 70. I don't, I don't think that necessarily takes skill, but yeah. digging deep, trying to find a hidden gem that maybe no one else, or maybe a lot of people came across, but didn't realize what they were looking at. But me uncovering that gem, that's the thrill for me, at least as someone walking around. Yeah. As the person behind the table. In let's call it two days because the first day was a wash. I think I made 30 transactions. And how fun is it? Just the idea that here's a complete stranger coming up to your table and you and the stranger are able to come to some sort of mutual agreement, whether you're buying, selling or trading. And as our guy Sam says, that's just like the value of human capital. I was thinking of what Sam was saying. Uh, and by the way, if you want to check out a cool interview, we had him on way early. Um you know, he's also a teacher, but the human capital, I was telling myself that I was like, how successful was this trip? And way more than the money and the deals, which, you know, coming away with cool cards was definitely right up there. But the human capital, like you said, of just like restoring your faith in humanity, too, because sometimes you get so jaded, like if you're you know watching the news or you're hearing about bad stories and then you have like. 150 quality conversations with complete strangers, like you said. And and I felt like because it was like culture collision, people at some points had like more style with what they had. Like, you know, for example, I picked up a lot of pop century, like uh, pop culture autographs and stuff, which we're planning to get to in part two of our recap. So, you know, we want this to be more like 10,000 foot view overarching experience and the first team all culture collision, more about the people and then part two to be more about the cards. So, but I'll mention this one cause I found this, this angel Reese at a, at one of the trade nights, angel Reese RPA basically from uh, you know, she's the LSU all American women's basketball player, huge NIL deal. She did the, you can't see me to Caitlin Clark, which, <laughs> which I thought was actually nasty. I didn't like that. She, went over to her and did the you can't like right in her face it's different than somebody walking past you in a timeout you're such a but, good sport carmine thank you thank you but that doesn't change the fact that i love her attitude you know even though i didn't like that particular move i respect that she's you know intense kind of like a dennis rodman feel to me and i got this autograph with a patch from the inside tongue of one of her shoes you cool. know it says the size and everything just like a unique, like you said, you know, finding something that you think is a treasure. Like, I thought that was so cool, you know, and 
was able to trade a Michael Vick card for it. And I got like $50 of cash out of it in Atlanta trade the, you know, so if you're looking for the positive stories, you know, like the Atlanta Falcons connection with Mike Vick, you're in Atlanta, find a hidden gem. There's just so many like cool moments that happen at shows like this, like destination shows that make you feel like, Oh, that was cool. You know, it can kind of like give you a little, a little dose of fun, you know, when you rethink about it. A little dose of fun. It was a, more than a little. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, so let, let, let's talk about our uh, one one of the fun things, which was our second ever deal. Yeah. We made a trade, you and I. So the way this went down, you and I made a trade. I think it was actually almost two years ago to the date on Facebook. It, it involved uh, me trading you away a Kevin Durant autograph and you trading me back a Michael Jordan rookie sticker. We chatted over the phone. We stayed in touch ever since. Here we are, 72 podcast episodes later. Yeah. We haven't made a deal since then, but it kind of just worked out because I had a couple cards you liked, Mm -hmm. and you you owed me a little something for the Hawks tickets and the table face. I'm like, you know what, Connor? I don't even want I don't I don't want your cash. Let's use that towards a deal. Yeah, I I I really appreciated that you you know worked it out. But look at all the different uh, currencies we were combining into one actual cash. (laughs) <laughs> uh card show credit and ca- cards themselves and we made a deal happen yeah that's crazy i didn't even think about it like that but you're right three different currencies basically so let, let's run down that deal real simple um you i gave you 200 cash yep i gave you the it was 167 dollars that you owed me f- to cover the cost and what were the cards that you got from me that you liked i got these three right here this joe namath Old school autograph. What's the set on this? It's uh, upper deck upper game deck. game gear autographs. Sorry, two thousand one. You said yes. That's great. You know, almost a twenty three year old card. This Marshawn Lynch game used patch, and the card that I said previously on Crosstown Cardboard. So you can check the records that I wanted to get this Derek Jeter game used patch off of you just because the patch was so great. Old school looking card. Um, and I was able to do it. I think when you suggested the trade and the, you know, covering the table fees that made it very easy and, um, yeah, it was simple. So can you, is that, is that Jordan? I know you were debating at the time. Is that going to be a PC card? It is. Yes. And by the way, before we get into what you traded me in return, okay. The Marshawn Lynch patch that I traded to you, there's levels to this. Yeah. Remember the guy came over and he really wanted that patch card. He's from Buffalo. He's a huge Bills fan. Yep. And you happen to be wearing on that third day a Buffalo Bills t-shirt that you got from me. <laughs> so the, the, the levels of just like card happenings here, you can't make yeah. this up. No, that was that was great. I even got a video of that on uh, what we're going to put out in two parts of a vlog. So we're going to have a video recap, which I'm going to be working on shortly after this podcast episode drops. So make sure you check that out. It's going to be on the Crosstown Cardboard YouTube. We'll do two parts of the vlog. Me and Craig mic'd up. We got other people mic'd up to tell their cool stories and card coincidences. We got somebody from Shanghai, China, who had, (laughs) I'm not going to spoil it. It had a card connection and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. So definitely check out those vlogs. I think, I think, you know, people will like them. They're going to be unique stories as well. Sure. Um, but back to our deal. The cards you traded back to me. These two were just kind of to make the numbers work. Bernie Williams, flawless, or National Treasures, game worn jersey. Yep. I like this because Bernie Williams and I share a birthday. There you go. There you go. And uh, Bernard King, Ultimate Collection. It is a Knicks patch, but it's on a Bullets uniform. I'm not quite sure this one is PC, but I still like it. Yeah, that was like a so so. It was kind yeah. of a. And the card that I'm keeping is 1999, 2000, Upper Deck, NBA Legends, Michael Jordan game worn jersey and it's funny i put this on my instagram story today this card is roughly valued around 500 you know how much of justin herbert well, last sale 600 there was a psa 8 that went a little lower yesterday Five, but 550 550 no, it, it was under 500 but whatever oh, it's okay. Okay. okay it's all good and i was looking today i was just curious what could we compare this michael jordan game use jersey card that's worth roughly 500 to dude right. a justin herbert Prism Silver PSA 10 rookie is worth yeah. basically a thousand dollars. Wow. So would you rather a, a Herbert 
silver prism or two of these? Well, not Maybe. if I'm, I mean, it depends what you're doing, a flip or a. Yeah, no, I know. I get it. But you get what I'm saying. Make if it I make was, sense. Even if I was flipping, though, I'd rather have two of the Jordans. I mean, because it's interesting. Plus, you know, uh, still with the with the summary piece of this, with the $1,000 card, I didn't sell a single card that was worth $1,000 or more. I wasn't All, even close. Well, I traded, we'll get into that maybe next episode. I what I traded off of like a twelve hundred dollar card. But the biggest card I sold for cash was my Gronk uh white box one of one, the uh national treasures, and it was an inscription, yeah. you know, Gr Rob Gronkowski and then Gronk. And I sold that for eight hundred. I bought it at the national for six fifty. So nice. that was my biggest what was your biggest sale? Do you remember? Yeah. I have it all here. I was I was Tony Gwynnon up in this. Yeah. You know, singles, That's, singles. Yeah. Like I'm looking at the, the sales, like 200, 180, 100. Yeah. 175. Yeah. You know, just, just singles, I, singles. Tony I was, Gwynn, I was Tony hitting, Gwynn. I was hitting that range too with my purchases. Like the most expensive card I'm coming back with, which I won't reveal yet. Cause we'll get to our first team. All uh culture collision was probably like a $600 card. That was the most expensive card I'm coming back with out of my 22 new cards that made it home. And but like you said, in that 100 to 3 400, maybe 500 range was where many more people were comfortable operating, trading, cash. That was the range that I saw 100 to 500. And you can get like you you said countless times here on the podcast, you can get countless cool cards in that range. I mean there's so many you know, wide range of top tier guys, cool cards of them, pop culture stuff in that hundred to five hundred range, for sure. And look, I I stuck to my guns. The guy, the guy next to us in the Detroit Lions jersey, uh -huh. he was saying he's like, oh Friday, you know, it was the best best show I've had. You know, it made eight thousand dollars. Like that's cool. Cool, I didn't ask, but um, we oh. just, <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But we were just talking about like the types of cards we have, and he was. He was like, I'm selling a lot, and I'm, and I was looking at a showcase, and he's got all this ultra modern stuff, and he's, I'm like, yeah, man, it's just like you know, not the type of stuff that I like, and he's like, I like money, I'm like, I like game use patches, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and listen, if that's what you are in the hobby for, then you know, more power to you. I think for us, that's a little bit sad because they don't get the enjoyment of the actual cards themselves, the cool stories. They're not looking for the connections as much. They're looking for the connection between cash to the deposit thing in the ATM. That's the connection they're looking for. And yeah, the cousins, I, I, yeah, sorry, I, heard, sorry. I heard them say that. Yeah. The cousins, they, they had a great thing about, you know, what you do the hobby for, is it money or is it meaning? Actually, they didn't say it quite like that. I oh, phrased yeah. it like that. I don't want to give them credit for what I think is a cool phrasing because we've stolen their stuff before. You know, we have communi that. communication is lubrication, stuff like that. So, what were you going to say? That a lot. I would. I don't know about you. I don't think I sold a card to anyone, or maybe I'm sure we did. Whose like idea is to let me buy this at a good deal and go sell it over there? Like it seemed yeah. like a lot of the trades and sales were genuine. I mean, perfect example. I'm just looking at my my records here. I sold this son who's the south korean soccer player whose cards i keep picking up i had his mm -hmm. uh like match ball autograph from merlin and there was this young kid coming around here i asked him why he likes son he's also he was also korean so they share a culture and yeah. he's just building up his son collection so i was able to sell him a son autograph card and i know that was going to a kid who like really loved collecting him so those are the i think more of the types of sales that and trades that we were doing yeah from one son to another son how thoughtful of you so no, but you're 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 really right in that range, hundred percent agree. That was what was going. I did sell. I had an excruciating deal with this one kid, um, who was definitely reselling my card, which is great for him. And he told me like, I need room on this. I need. I'm like, listen, that's great that you need room. <laughs> I also am trying. I got to sell the card. Like, I what am I donating? You're not. You're not a nonprofit. Well, you were a four. This some kid of the kids. Great. Some of the kids there think you're there to donate. We'll Spoiler. we'll get into that. A kid who made the first <laughs> team all culture collision. That was hilarious. Yeah. But this this kid is like this. He's a high school kid. I'm like, you're not a nonprofit. You're a you're a for profit entity. So don't act like you're now. The people who were talking about the autistic um, the autistic organization that was helping autistic kids. 
yeah, that's a donation. I'll buy the 50 yeah. 50 raffles all day long, you know, which I wish I would have won. Darn it. We also yeah, had right. a, a, we also had one where we were, um, Answering questions oh, from oh, fanatics. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. Was he fanatics? That. Was he with fanatics? Yeah, listen, we made fools of ourselves, bro. We had chances to win a Donovan Mitchell signed jersey if I would have gotten that question right, and yours was a Mookie Betts signed jersey. Yep. So, yeah, you know, here we are, sports guys, just striking out, zero for two. Not very Tony Gwynn of us. But, and and to add context, someone from fanatics was coming around and like doing trivia, right? And we both happened to be selected at different times, and we both. Got our questions wrong. So I'm not going to lie, though. It, it, it was a it would they were fair questions, but not like a no brainer type of question. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I mean, we still should have got it though. I suppose. All right. So can we? Can we? So obviously, the fanatics guy who stumped us is not on our first team. All culture collision. But please, please start us off because these lead to great stories. Yeah. Who is um, the Who is the number five on your? Oh, I was going to go top to bottom. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Who's number so one? All, all team, first team, all culture collision. Basically, the the five players, players, <laughs> the five people who I would say had the biggest uh, impact on our show. <laughs> yeah, or they had a moment that was a impactful. moment, a moment worthy of telling a story about around cards. And I yeah. think clear cut number one is our boy Dom. <laughs> right, the card father thirteen. Dom yeah. came in hot. Tom, Dom yep. came in hot to the table and was just like instant right away. Like, been listening to you guys since day one. You're my guys. And we were just kicking it. It was a good time. Yeah. I was so flattered, honestly, the way yep. he was complimenting us and referencing our episodes. And, yep. you know, good little, energy. Like, it, it was amazing to, to see the excitement that somebody else had just from connecting with us over sports cards through our show. It was like it was awesome. It was really yeah, cool. it was great. He, he came with the energy and he was telling us about a card he really wanted a LeBron. And he asked us, it was a 2014, 15 Fleer retro LeBron James jambalaya in his Mount St. Vincent high school uniform. And he was asking us, he's yeah. like, what do you think? Even though it's in the high school uniform, we kind of told him, you know, I think with LeBron, that's still significant. He's a big LeBron collector. And you being the mensch that you are, you're <laughs> like, you know what? I'll go back. He, you said to Dom, I'm like, I'm going to go back with you to the table and uh, let's see if we can work out a deal. So what well, cause, cause it wasn't, I mean, it was nice to, to help somebody out, but it wasn't just a mensch move. I mean, I love trying to get PC cards or like help people with just a general deal. Like when I, you know, when I helped Oz at the national, get one of his Allen Iverson grails, like a $2,000 Allen Iverson card. And I'm like, well, here's the comps make this argument or say this, you know, about the value, yeah, or maybe if he, if he says this, you can counter that. I just love the thought process and the fact that he was going after a PC card and he asked our opinion. And when somebody asks my opinion of something, I, that is really a flattering thing to me. Like you really want to know what I think about something. And now because you trusted me to give you an opinion, I'm all in on trying to help somebody get, you know, something that they thought I could help them with. And it worked out. He closed the deal for the BGS 9.5. Yep. He totally so Dom, did. if you're listening, Dom, well, obviously he's listening. So, Dom, <laughs> thank you for helping enhance our show experience with your positive energy. Yes. And Dom knows that we are very thankful, you know, on top of what he is going to be listening to right now. So, thanks, Dom. And we'll show that off more in the vlog as well, that deal. Uh, but really cool. It was a very cool color match between the St. Vincent, St. Mary, like uh, brownish gold and the green and the BGS nine, five label. It just really hit different with, uh, with that compared to the PSA, but that, so he's, he's on the first team, all culture collision. He's number one. Uh, second on the uh, first team, all culture collision is Mr. The plug. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. The Plug, yes. Let, let, let me let me premise this by saying, preface this by saying, if you have to proclaim, and I said this to you, if you have to proclaim to others that you're the plug, are are you the plug? I can respect having, and uh, by the way, Future once asked that question on one of his songs, really, I'm the plug, really, actually, maybe it was a statement, really, I'm the plug, which is basically what this plug was saying, and... Uh, he introduced himself as the plug, which, which was, which was the deal breaker for me. Like if your Instagram is like the plug, whatever, but if I'm meeting you and he's like, 
I'm like, hey, I'm Carmine. You know, nice to meet you. Can I film, you know, what you have in the case, like some of your cards? Because he had a Larry Bird. I, I'm sorry. I had a Larry Bird flawless, my uh, dual patch right here, the vertical dual game used patches in a BGS 9.5. One of my best pickups. I got this at Burbank and I talked about it a bunch of times. And he had the Kobe version of this one. So when I was filming, you know, that cool matchup that when he came by the table for the vlog, I'm like, so, you know, I'm Carmine. Nice to meet you. Can I film this for the podcast? He's like, oh, I'm the plug. I was like, what? <laughs> and I thought like, he had like, like, like electricity. Yeah. I'm like, I, there's no outlets in here, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I thought he had like some type of like ethnic name. Like, okay, the plug, like maybe he's pronouncing it. You know, I leaned in. I got it. And I'm like, he's like, no. And he repeated it. I'm like, this guy's a character. Yeah. And for context, I don't think we said this. He's a 21 year old college kid. Yeah, he goes to uh, um, Cal State Fullerton. something. Fullerton, I think. Maybe this kid had a hundred thousand dollars worth of cards in his oh. little case. No, I believe and that he was the plug. I believe I wasn't fighting the name. Like he had a dual autograph is, of who was it, LeBron and Kobe, or Kobe and like I said, yeah. six figures worth of cards in a little case. Yep. And you remember what I asked him? I said, I said straight up, and I've wondered this about all these young full-time card flippers. I said to him, do you have any money invested in the stock market? Yeah. And he said, zero, zero dollars. Yeah. Listen, to each their own. All I'm saying is if I were a, a consultant for a high-end card dealer, maybe $100,000 worth of cards and, and zero dollars in the market – Maybe just 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 a little, just a little off. What do you, you know? what do you want that ratio to be? Ideally, just at least put a dollar. You know, at least put a dollar in the market. Can't so be zero. So ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine in cards, one dollar in the four hundred one k. It's better than having nothing in there. But no, it is uh, definitely have like ten percent going into the four hundred one k Roth IRA. You know, just a Vanguard account index, whatever it is. And I think it's for a honestly, this could be a whole nother podcast episode, like. Yeah. These people who do this full time, they have these tangible assets. Be smart with your money. That's all I'm saying. Yes. But it's not it's not like full time and you're making a living off it. It's like full time kids or young adults, most likely still living with their parents or in college. Yeah. Like if you're doing it full time, then that's your job. And you're sure. putting food on the table with that. Then, yeah, you know, you need to have that much into it, of course. But, you know. Yeah. And then you, what, didn't you ask him, like, how did you get these cards? <laughs> yeah. I, and he really just said snowballing, which I, I everyone's got their own story. I just, yeah. I personally, I don't, living's expensive. If he's able to snowball his way up from zero to six figures worth of cards, more power to him. Yeah. Okay. So he's, he's, he's the plug. So final ruling do you consider him the plug? Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. No oh, plug. no plug. Yeah. Listen, you, you got to have at least – he's 21. Give me a few more years until you proclaim yourself the plug. You young it. You young and Humble yourself. If he was a little more humble, he'd have money in the 401k. There you go. All um, right. Number three. Right. Unplug. So number three <laughs> is Mr. Firm Hamshake. Oh, my gosh. This Mr. might be my favorite one. This might be Mr. my favorite Firm. one. Because of, the, because of the, genuine, the genuine miscommunication was my yeah. favorite part of this. The kids at the show were awesome. Like, they they brought they brought the noise. Yeah. So, there were just three youngins. One of them liked this Anthony Richardson Vortex Revolution rookie card. The only reason I even have this card is because, same thing, the little bit of table fee that Ken owed me. I'm like, Ken, just give me a few cards. Yeah. So this card had a $15 sticker on it. And this young kid must have been 12 years old. You you tell it from your point of view. Well, first of all, he, he came over. He also came in hot. And he had a big time energy. Probably, yeah, 12, 11, in that range. Sixth grade, probably. And he came over and he was pushing his bigger friend. And he said, you made me lose a coin flip. He was like, you cost me $15 because my coin flipped off of you. It hit your foot. And then I lost. And so he's like mad at his friend for interfering with the coin flip that lost him $15, which coincidentally was the cost of your card. And uh, there you go. So I'm like, but he could have just as easily interfered with your coin flip and won, you know, like wasn't his fault. So he's like, oh, he owes me $15, whatever. It was just funny originally. 
And then, and then <laughs> he said, I'll give you a firm handshake for that Anthony Richardson. And you immediately extended your hand, gave him a good firm handshake. And you were like, this kid just freaking stared me down, man. And you were like, man, that eye contact, you were impressed by his, uh, you know, ability to, to, to give you a firm handshake and, and, you know, stay in there with an adult, hang in there. You know, he was tough. And, and then, so they're packing up. I'm like, wow, that was generous of Craig to give this kid a $15 card for free, just for a handshake. Wow. This guy really loves the kids. What a teacher card club. I was like, wow. And then they're packing up. They're getting ready to walk away. They're all excited. The guy's like, I don't have to push you anymore for $15. Cause I got a $15 card. We're, we're good. We're good. They hash out their beef. And then all of a sudden I hear you, you're like, so you're just not going to pay for that card. And then they turned around and they're like, what do you mean? And I was thinking, what do you mean also? And you're like, well, we shook on it, a $15 card. And I'm like, oh no, I, I think I just said it out loud. I was like, ah, oh, cause I saw the miscommunication and take it from there. Yeah. Um, you running it back in hindsight, I probably should have just given him the card, but it's like, there's certain kids who are like you. You're happy to give stuff to. Not that I wasn't happy to give it to these kids. But these obviously were, you were. Obviously you weren't. That's what you're saying is the factor. But I'm saying these, these were a bunch of punk kids. You know they're they, they don't they don't need my fifteen dollar card. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was funny. It was funny. I think maybe I should have just given it to him because it was my bad. But whatever. At least we have a story to tell about it. Yeah. So basically you thought that he was shaking on the price tag and he thought he was getting it for free and a firm handshake. Yeah. Well, miscommunication. What can I say? Communication too is big, too big of a card to ask for that on $10, no, I, 10, $10 or $5. Yes. $15, you know, maybe offer 10 and a firm handshake. If, if I'm, if I'm, you know, no, in hindsight, I should have just given it to him, but I didn't. So <laughs> It's still down fifteen dollars. How about that kid's face when it, when he gave the card back, and then you were like, "Oh uh, yeah," it was kind of just like a. It really changed the momentum of the whole the whole situation. Yeah. Oops, listen, I, I try to be a stand up gentleman. My bad on that one. Okay, I will say, listen, that same day there was a kid with his father, very shy kid who was a big Tottenham fan, and. I had a couple cards in my bargain bin of Harry Kane, who's, who was a forward for Tottenham, like a memorabilia card, not associated with anything. And then some, uh, some like prison parallel. So I took him out. I'm like, here you go. And very shy kid, but he thought I was like trying to sell them. I'm like, oh, this, these are yours. Oh, there you go. And dad is very thankful. The kid was shy, but when he walked away, the kid was like looking at the cards, like eyes lit up, all happy. Like that moment made my, my day for me. Yeah. So you could have had a second moment like that if you were. <laughs> Listen, am, am, am I saying, am I telling that story to make up for the uh, Anthony Richardson handshake mishap? Maybe, but yeah. can't well, change the past now. We need to hire a PR department. We're getting so big with our 370 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and those deals with kids were awesome. I had a Jerome Bettis in-person autograph and I was able to sell it to the kid with the Steelers shirt and the Steelers hat with his dad next to him. Yeah, and cool. I had forty dollar price tag. He was like, "Would you do thirty on that?" I couldn't say yes fast enough to get this kid a cool, you know, Jerome Bettis. Um, but yeah, the kids were very knowledgeable too. Like they were not like, you know, needing to be having their hand held by their parents. Like they were, you know, really operating out there. So yeah, that was good stuff. Cool. All right, uh, athlete number four on the first team all culture collision was it. Was it the non-subscriber? Yes, the non the yeah. non-subscriber, and then we'll do number four. Number four yeah. on the uh, not Th this is all. This is, this is also. I, I I'm sorry to cut you off, bro, but this was so. This is a story that I think we'll be able to tell for yeah the the, the whole time we have this podcast. And I and I was only at the show Friday for an hour, and this happened in the one hour I was there. I had a 2002 Pacific update. Michael Pittman, a senior, Super Bowl champ for the Bucks. Game used patch, the uh, NFL logo shield out of 25. He liked the card. I think I had it stickered at 150. He wanted 80. I said 100. He said 90. And I said to you before the show, I'm like, you know what I want to try maybe? I had this cutout here where people could scan and pay me with Venmo or PayPal. And then I had a separate one that people could scan. And it brings them to our podcast, YouTube page or Apple podcast page. 
So I'm like, you know, I'm going to use this as a bargaining chip at some point where if someone wants a price, I'll give them their price and I'll say like, all right, you know what? You could have it at that price, but subscribe to the pod. In my head, I'm like, oh, dude, this is going to (laughs) work easy every time. So uh, what went down? (laughs) <laughs> what did you see? He like this guy came over, someone that you knew. He so liked yeah, this so shoe. I knew him. I knew him. His name's Isaac, and he likes really unique stuff. Like, doesn't really matter the player. I mean, the player, of course, matters, but like the unique factor of the card is like his main thing for picking anything up. He's like, will I ever see this again? So even though it's Michael Pittman Senior, not something you would you would typically think somebody would collect him, but because it was a shield, you know, now he's like. So he had bought a uh, Randy Johnson Ultimate Collection sick patch from me. And it was weird because it was in at the San Francisco show. So now I moved from Southern Oregon and a show in San Francisco to moving to South Carolina, doing a show in Atlanta. And I see the same guy again, but he travels all over looking for unique cards. And he has a good, good uh, budget to spend on them. But yeah. so I knew Obviously. him. So we were we were friendly. We were having a good conversation. No, it was it was, it was good banter. But yeah. I wanted a hundred. He wanted to pay ninety for it. I said, oh, you know what? I'll give it to you at ninety. I took out the paper and I said, you got to subscribe to the podcast. And you know what he says? He says, I hate deals like that. I'm like what? What are you talking? What do you mean? You hate that? You hate when people try to promote their own brand. You hate that. <laughs> and what did he proceed to? Do? <laughs> he proceeded to say, I will pay you. 95 to not subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> Bro, so and I'm paid, just watching. He paid me five dollars more than he wanted to pay, so he didn't have to subscribe. And he Bro. only had a hundred, so he gave me the hundred. He's like, I'm like, I don't have change. Like, I, I don't have five dollar bill, and we just it ended up just being a hundred dollar transaction. And and no subscription to our podcast. <laughs> and no subscription. <laughs> Bro, when he said, because I'm sitting right next to you as you're, you know making this deal nobody's like really hanging out so on the friday and i'm just watching this go down and i thought for sure when you said 90 coming down to his number that he wanted and all he had to do was subscribe to the podcast i was like that just sealed it (laughs) and he said when he said no he said i'd pay five more dollars to not subscribe i don't i don't but in our defense he doesn't watch any hobby content he doesn't like that because he because and he told us because it was like such an honest thing. It wasn't like, you know, screw you guys. I'm not going to subscribe. It was just like, it was nothing personal, but it was just hilarious. You know, that, that he smacked us in the face like that. He doesn't listen to any hobby content at all. Cause he's so involved in the hobby himself. He wants an escape from his escape. I guess he doesn't want to be bombarded with, you know, podcasts and stuff. So totally respect it. But the way he shut our for sure deal sealer down like that was really surprising. He was poo-pooing the idea, but when I mentioned to him that we've recorded 71 episodes in a row and this is only second time meeting, he started to switch around like, oh, like that is actually pretty cool. But still, yeah. again, still didn't subscribe. All right. Um, <laughs> he was like, that's cool. I'll pay you five more dollars to not subscribe again. <laughs> you know, here's another five. Don't even mention it again. <laughs> Don't mention um, it. Stop talking to me. Turn the mic off <laughs> right now. And the – all right. Fifth and final member of the first team all culture collision is someone I know because I see him at all the New York shows, and that is Jeff's cards. Mm-hmm. Amazing pop, all sports cards, but amazing pop culture collection as well. Again, Jeff's a New York guy. I think he lives in Brooklyn. He is yeah. the head of like um, the mental health department at Fordham University, which I think is a super cool job because college kids, you know, they need mental health services. They speak to counselors. He oversees the counselors. So I, I respect that job a lot. Yep. And he's in this sports card game. He's been in it forever. And at his table, he had a card that I really liked a lot. And I didn't make a play for it. And fast forward a couple hours later, I see him at our table talking to you. Yeah. With that same card. Yeah. So the fact that I, I know Jeff, I saw the card. I well, you, you didn't see it, though, until after I had bought it. False. You Oh, you already saw us dealing for it? No, I saw it at his table earlier in the day. Yeah, but you didn't know I got it until he walked over with it. And I said, bro, you're not going to believe what I just got. Yes, yes, yes. And what I was it? You're gonna, you're gonna be, I knew you're going to be very, uh, I don't know if jealous, but happy for me, but wishing that you would have had it. And it was, you know, and I didn't know you looked at it earlier, but it was this notable nicknames, Willis Reed, 
the captain inscription. The captain of both of our New York Knicks championship years, late 70s, early 80s. I'm sorry, late 60s, early 70s. The captain. And he had a $350 sticker on it. Last sold was $250 and before that $200. But it was only one sale like in the last year and then another sale in the last two years. Even though these are numbered out of 99, the first year notable nicknames might be a collecting lane that I that I keep going down just because the yeah. first year that set I've been into the inscriptions and I mean so why didn't you make a move on this one before I did I don't have an answer for you it's like I loved the card but I kind of wanted to just walk around first and see everything I should have made a play mm -hmm. he who hesitates is lost yeah so that was cool and uh I'm trying to do some more stuff with Jeff's cards. He uh, he told me a few cool stories because I was wondering because I you know you noticed that I was starting to get more into the pop culture cards. Like I bought a Billy Crystal auto, Charlie Sheen auto, John Travolta auto. I got a uh, I won't reveal the other two. I'll save those for the for the uh, part two when we get more into the cards. Yep. But um, he had such a cool pop culture collection, and he's like, yeah, I have sports, but. You know, and those are and those are fun and those, you know, are good for deals. But he's like, I, these pop culture cards are just way more fun, you know. And I, I was like, man, you're right. You know, so I, I liked a lot of his stuff. Yeah, no, Jeff's a good, great dude, great cards. And I'm glad you guys made a deal uh, before yep. before we go to part two and talk about like get into the, the nitty gritty of the cards themselves. I guess yeah. just other tidbits about the show. It was attached to a hotel and it just like. I mean, other than trade night, which you could speak on, it didn't really seem overly crowded. Like, you know, it was a nice, spacious hotel. There were things nearby to do. The show itself was laid out nicely. There was a basketball court in the back left for that 3v3 tournament, which yep. I like, didn't even acknowledge was was happening. I like that <laughs> there were also a few people selling sneakers. Yep. Like I said, the DJ and the music. I don't, I don't know what else I'm missing. I'm trying to paint the picture yeah. for people the best that well, I can. We, we have to talk about – going to the game on Friday, but let me, yeah. let me, so that'll be our last thing. Let me just touch on the trade nights real quick. So I went to two different trade nights at the hotel that was connected to culture collision and uh, stayed out until three in the morning at these trade Party nights both, both times. Yeah. And it was until like, it was just one group of drunk friends talking about cards left. And basically I was like, all right, I'm not friends with them. So I guess I have to leave, you know, I'm not going to walk into a friend group. So, uh, that was how late I stayed out and made some fun deals and some good deals, but also learned a lot, which we'll get to also in part two with uh, our honorable mention, all culture collision team, other people who re other people who really impacted our show experience and uh, gave us, you know, something to walk away with as well. So I went to both of those and then me and big Ken, big Ken is in a fantasy football group or league, I should say with Jeff Wilson, sports card investor, who has appeared on one of our vlogs before from Burbank. And um, so Jeff, of course, is opening up Cards HQ in Atlanta, massive sports card space. They got vertical showcases instead of horizontal, you know, much more, uh, you can use the real estate much more, you know, standing up and everything. So we went, we went to uh, Cards HQ for a trade night they were having after the show on Saturday, we only stayed there for about an hour, uh, maybe even 45 minutes. I mean, it was, it was pretty short. Looked around. Um, they got everything priced in the vertical showcases. Cool spots to rip. They had uh, like podcasting areas. They had a studio where one of the golden guys was reporting, uh, recording something yep. for, uh, I don't know, some type of content. They were ripping. I don't know what they were doing, but. It had the on air, you know, thing that was lit up. I thought they were impersonating me, but you know, they they were doing their own thing. So something cool that happened at that trade night at Cards HQ, in addition to seeing the new space, was uh, I connected with my guy Mark Paradise Card Breaks. He's hmm. a card store owner in Las Vegas, right off the Strip, and I had already met him at the trade night on Friday night in the hotel lobby. And I'm like, first of all, this guy's sharp, great communicator. Totally knew what he was talking about. He knew his cards. He had cool cards. Um, 
you know, he had him priced, just seemed like a solid guy. And he told me about his story, which will also be on the recap vlog, about how he just, as a sports card store owner, had his first million dollar month in revenue. Wow. And I was like, damn, bro. I gave him a fist bump. I was like, good for you. That's a lot of money, you know, to be to be bringing in in, you know, sales. And it's almost all breaks. So it's like the shop is secondary. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, we're really trying to build up the shop. But like the breaks are just insane. So anyway, he ended up buying my Magic Johnson 1992 NBA All-Star Game autograph ticket nice. at, at Cards HQ. Yeah. So I'll pull up a picture of that just uh, what'd you, for uh, a What you pay for that one again? You talked about that a couple times ago. Yeah, I paid 300 and I sold it for 400 It's great. Yeah. And to get it to somebody who it's going to be a collectible item, you yeah. know, that was really cool. Now, did you explain to him the ticket? I just showed it to him. I mean, okay. I didn't, I assumed he knew like commemorative ticket, you know, yep. I mean, it's still from 1992 again. No, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I bought it, you know, thinking that it was cool, you know, cool ticket 92. Um, great condition auto 10. So he basically told me, you know, that he collects like cool, unique stuff like that. And he also told me it's great aesthetic and great branding for his shop if he were to put it in the shop like we really care about the unique creative fun element of the hobby not just churning people out and making money it adds a flavor it adds a decor almost and a vibe a little and a little sazon, to, if you will. a little sazon on the sports card hobby so that was really cool we had a great conversation i interviewed him for the vlog and gratifying like we were talking about that somebody who does this full time bought cards or bought a ticket because it happened to you as well for their own personal collection from us. Meaning some of the things that we have can be collectible items for somebody to enjoy and appreciate. So that's always really cool and uh, mm -hmm. nice back and forth. Yeah, and that's what's fun about collecting. I think the way we do more unique items, when you find the right buyer for it, you know, it's really the right buyer. Mm -hmm. Uh, something, a couple things about the show itself. I want to touch upon me personally as a soccer fan, the soccer participation and just options and choice in the room was one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Like relative to the rest of the show. If so, if like 5% of the national soccer, maybe 15%, I'm just throwing an arbitrary number out there of this show was soccer. So as a soccer collector, and that was my biggest sport pickup quantity wise, mm -hmm. plenty to work with there. Uh, yeah. I didn't see a ton of vintage, whereas the traditional card show is a lot of vintage. Yep. Did you find the same? Like there was enough, but definitely just as much as any other sector. Yeah, totally. And at the national, it was like 50% vintage yeah. from yeah. what I, maybe that, maybe that's overly done. Cause I don't really do that much vintage, but uh, I'd never been at a show with vintage, like at the national, like the you know, the grandfathered in collectors and, the, and the, you're totally right with the ratio being like, and there was a lot of star Wars pop culture. Like I said, vintage soccer, modern football was all over. Modern basketball was all over, but people did have some cool stuff. You just have to kind of find it. Yeah. There was uh, I mean, you know what? We'll save the, the card card talk, I guess the things we saw, the things we got for the next segment, but yeah. we witnessed history on Friday night. Yes, let's let's make that the last thing we're going to touch on. So you had suggested that we go to an Atlanta Hawks game, and it just so happened that Friday night the Dallas Mavericks were in town playing the Atlanta Hawks. So great decision by you. We got like what fifty dollar, fifty five dollar tickets. Yeah, less. It was like forty five a ticket. Bro, great seats. We were in the upper deck, but we were only two rows back from the front, and we were in the first row that was elevated over the front row people so we had like an amazing view so we sit down we were fashionably late we sat down midway through the first quarter <laughs> right <laughs> i'm gonna tell you why we were late no we were uh you know finishing up the card show so we got in our seats midway through the first quarter luca already had 15 points and we look at each other we're like yeah he's probably gonna have a good game tonight oh cool we're gonna see a good game out of luca Clearly, we had no clue that it was going to be a 73-point game that only him and three other guys have ever done, David Thompson, Kobe, and Will Chamberlain a few times. And he had 41 at halftime, 
I think he had like 57 through three quarters. People falling out of their seats, bro, in front of us. The girl in front of us turned around. She's filming. She's like, how many points do you guys think he's going to get? And I'm like, 82. And you're like, 78. You know, and if they didn't double and triple team him in the fourth quarter, he might have. Um, but watching the away crowd get behind him and go bonkers reacting when his heat checks were going in and step back three, the guy's hand is right in his face and he's shooting it like he's wide open, totally unbothered. That was an all time. I mean, we may never witness an individual performance like that again. No. I mean, playoffs would be different, you know, if we went to a playoff game. But, like, a scoring output like that, that's probably a, a one of one in our lifetime. Yeah, and the fact that it's hard with just busy life to sit down and watch an entire basketball game. But when you're there, you're, you're dialed in, I'm locked in. So to see yeah. that from basically start to finish, the way Luca plays, man, it's like it's not – so overwhelming, it's just controlled, and he goes at his own pace, and his ability to decelerate, it's the footwork, it's crazy. And as you'll see in the vlog, I absolutely hated every second of you trying to film us at the game. I hated it. I was so uncomfortable, but I did it for you. So, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Yes, thank you, bro. I think it will come across that you were not loving it when I was uh, doing that, which is funny because I don't. Like I'm not I'm I'm very anti like selfie with whatever's going on behind you. You know, like I don't like put stuff on my personal story or post on Instagram very often. But if it's for the sports card community, we have to put out that content, baby. Uh, so I had to film <laughs> I had to film your reaction to this historic performance, you know, and thankfully I think it'll be worth it. But I noticed where your boundary was and I said, We're not gonna film again. In public, card show, fair game. Um, yes. About a dozen people reached out. Did you get the physical ticket? Can you get me a copy of the physical ticket? We tried. The box office was closed. Yes. Could I try to call the box office and get a physical ticket? Sure. Will I? Probably not. Oh, wait a minute. Can you do that for past games? I have no idea. I'm probably not going to try. Probably not. Um, should we take a halftime break and we'll talk about cards? Like cards, cards? Yes, we will. For the people actually listening to this podcast and YouTube, that will be coming out on Thursday, part two. We're going to record it right now. We're going to take a sip of water, you know, decompress, whatever. And then we'll hop right back in it. Uh, we scored 41 points in the first half. We hope to score another 32 in the second half for a total of 73. So we're going to take a halftime, but it'll be two days when the podcast and YouTube come out. Keep an eye for that vlog, part one and two, and all three parts of our recap for the culture collision show which will eventually be out all three will be out by saturday so tuesday thursday saturday saturday we plan to be recording with big ken to finally flush out the trifecta boom peace